Welcome back to the stage of science. What? Hello, I'm Jeff Gerstmann, and I have uh, <clears throat> made a pact with myself to play some chunk. Not you know, not finishing every game. That's not we're going to be here all year, you know, all lifetime. Uh, um, we're going to get every single. Nintendo Entertainment System game released in the United States on a list. You know what I mean? No, it's uh, this. Uh, if you if you didn't watch uh, last week, I found myself <clears throat> at a weird crossroads with the NES, where it just felt like a lot of the conversation about it over the last five years or so has just been um, compacted into a handful of games that are always like the laughably bad ones. Or the like canonically good ones, and and I reached a point where like the games that were canonically good, I hadn't played them in so long that I was like, I'm not sure that these games are as good as people are saying they are. And with the bad games, I was like, I know those games can't be quite that bad. There are some games that are that are that bad, but I don't know if these are the ones. And I just felt like I had like lost touch with um with the platform as a whole because. It's, it is still, and you know, hey, with, uh, with a good reason, it was a dominating platform. It, it, it brought the, it, it brought video games back the, back to the United States in some weird way, unless you had a computer. Um, <clears throat> and it really kind of, you know, it, it created the modern video game industry, I suppose. Um, that stuff is important, obviously. But yeah, it, it just felt like a lot of the conversation, it just, it, it become very cyclical and very, um, people parroting what they had seen in other videos. <clears throat> and, um, I didn't want to fall prey to that. So I, I decided that it was, it was time to play some of the games. First, I had to play a few games and just like, Hey, like, cause every game, every game I was thinking of when I was trying to put together a list of my top 10 NES games. Every time I would spit out a game name, I would have like five, you know, like caveats for it. Like River City Ransom was the the first, uh, the first one, you know, that that came to mind, which probably means something. Um, <clears throat> but then I was like, oh, but the shop stuff is a pain in the ass, and there's this and that, and, you know, there's the game could just be like 0.5 percent better about pointing you in a direction. There's like little tiny bits and pieces where you just go like, oh, that game's also frustrating. Um. Because, you know, it, it had just been a very long time. And, um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it was nice to, to play some River City Ransom for, for a while and play, like, you know, more of it than maybe just five minutes. Because I, I think that's the, the other tempting thing is you just fire it up and you play through the first level of something and go, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was nice to sit down and play some, some, you know, some muscle tag team match and, you know, some of the other games we, we played last week. I'll get you a look at the list here as it stands right now. Um, the nine games we played last week and where they ended up. <clears throat> uh, at number nine, we have Captain Skyhawk, a truly dreadful... Like River Raid is a better game. It's River, this game feels River Raid inspired, but River Raid is a better game. Lunar Pool, which is uh, you know, it's got a bunch of weird trick shot space table stuff that is uh, interesting, but um, not the most exciting game in the world. Kid Nikki Radical Ninja, a game that if you would, I, a game that if you would ask me two weeks ago, what do you think about Kid Nikki? I'd be like, Kid Nikki fucking rips, man. We'll help you. He's got his fucking sword thing and death breath and. And then playing Kid Nikki again, Nikki again and, and really kind of thinking about it. Not so good. <laughs> Not so good. Um, at number six, we have Wrecking Crew. Which is a game that I think a lot of people forget or, or maybe they've never heard of. I, as, insofar as there are NES games that some people have never heard of. Which is, you know, weird to, to think in, in this day and age. Um uh, Wrecking Crew is like a puzzly platformery sort of thing. Um, interesting for an early NES game. I liked it a lot when it first came out, and it's uh, you know it's aged. It's aged. 
Uh, at number five, we have Low G Man, the Low Gravity Man, a game that comes to mind. It's this, it's the singularity of the NES library, <laughs> let's say, in that it is always uh, close to the tip of my tongue. It is close to my lips. It is close to 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 coming out, and and I am always talking about Low G Man in a way that it does not deserve. Um, and we played some of that, and it's it's okay. It's okay. You 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 know you can get to freeze enemies and stab them with a stick. It's weird. Uh, and number four, we have Muscle Tag Team Match. Is Muscle Tag Team Match the best wrestling game on the platform? Right now it is. Will it stay that way? Maybe. maybe. I, don't, I don't know. I had that game as a kid, liked it a lot. It's a very basic move set and uh, one of the least balanced games I have ever played. <laughs> uh, at number three, we have Kung Fu, an arcade conversion where I think the, the home version has is, is become kind of the definitive version of the game. Uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, like cinematic in a weird way. Boss fights against dr drastically different characters in a way that, uh, you know, kind of evokes the, the game of death kind of Bruce Lee thing that I, I think that they're kind of going for. Even you know, Spartan X, obviously not a Bruce Lee thing. Anyway, but you, you get what I mean. Um... At number two, we have Solomon's Key, an amazing puzzle uh, platformer that I hit a wall with every time I play it. I just go like, I'm fucking terrible at this game. <laughs> and I get about eight or nine levels in and go, I can't play any more of this. Um, and at number one, we have R River City Ransom, a game that uh, I think is doing a lot of things that a lot of current beat-em-ups could probably learn from or, or refuse to learn from. But also, that said, a lot of the games that did try to learn from it um, are bad. So, River City Ransom kind of like uh, hits, a, hits a really good balance of, uh, you know, stats and money and items, as well as being a beat-em-up in a way that I think a lot of the other games um, that, that followed in its footsteps uh, just did wrong. Um, Today I've got a set list of games that I'm looking to get through, um, but I think after this what I will probably do is I will go to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman, and I will solicit to the, Ger the Gerstman advisory panel, and I will ask them, uh, hey, what are some games you want me to, to play, and we'll, we'll, I'll pluck uh, a few of those uh, from the suggestions, and we'll do that next time, uh, so you can kind of guide the show a, a little bit here. There are some things, like I, I, I think I'm going to space out the what I think of as the big, big games. So if people just like continually suggest like the five, you know, like the five biggest NES games they can think of, then, you know, um, going to spread those out. But, um, but for this time out, I do have a list in mind. I also intended to start the show with a, a real showstopper here, but I don't, it's, we might not be able to start the show this way. I found the last can of Faxi Condi booster. Um, in the box back there, every one of these Faxicondis has been awful. Um, I put it in the freezer this morning, wanting to get it nice and cold in time for the show. And I left it in there a little too long so I can hear that it is a little bit icy. And so we're going to let this sit for a while. And then maybe by the end of the show, we can, uh, figure out what that thing's about. Ugh. Ugh. All right, yeah. So, so stay tuned for that, I guess. Um, let's uh, let's take it over to the the bone the boneyard, the bone zone, the zamboni. As always, my mister is turned on and in the background, and uh, as my kids walk over to the keyboard and mash on it. Who knows what screen's going to be on that thing when I when I bring it up? This is the loading screen for uh, the Atari eight hundred core. <laughs> um, but what we're looking for is uh, not that. It is in fact this. And I'll turn off the capture card in the background there so it's not just cycling colors all the time. Um, 
playing on RetroArch, I, I, BizHawk doesn't capture quite as easily. Otherwise, I would use BizHawk. Uh, I've been, you know, earning some... Re RetroAchievements.org certainly plays a role uh, in, in, in this process as well, where that's gotten me playing and thinking about a lot of older games in, in you know, ways that I haven't necessarily... Um, you know, hadn't necessarily been been thinking about them uh, lately. My retro achievements username is Alabama Scammer. If anyone wants to go look that up. Um. All right, first game up here. This is a game I remember as legendary. Uh, it originally was an arcade game. Um. Worked with a guy Miguel for years. Year. Actually, he wasn't there. He was there a year or two. And he was the only other person I ever knew that would talk really fun. Maybe John Carlo also. Maybe I think John Carlo might also be. Um, where did that go? A Trojan man. Trojan, um, originally an arcade game. They added this versus game mode that I don't think was, you know, I, I, that was not in the, in the original arcade game. Capcom had a pretty good run of um, adding things to their home ports in ways that I thought was pretty cool. Um, you're a guy with a sword and a shield. And you got to survive. It's also like post-apocalyptic, though. <laughs> if I, yeah, because there's like manhole covers and uh, a lot of a lot of stuff like that. Um, I remember this being a really big game. Um, I remember this this being a really awesome release here. Let's hope that the sound is working. I'm pretty sure it is. Well, why can't I? Well, the controls are not working at all here. There we go. Not entirely unlike Kung Fu, to be honest. We're going to pause it real quick here and just lower the game audio a smidge. Except I can put my shield up. Another up to jump game on the NES. You know, they only had two buttons to work with. What are you going to do? Got to have a sword button, got to have a shield button. Yeah, that's right. You can go down in the sewer, can't you? Uh... Just gotta walk this guy down. All right. Like, who are... Who, what is this infinite army of dudes with fucking, like, ma like flails or maces or whatever? Ah, oh, man. Thank you. 
Ugh. Gotta get these high jump boots. Oh, shit. That guy knocked my sword and shield away. I don't remember. I did not remember that that could be a thing that could happen. Can I just get the high boots, the, the high jump boots and leave? Oh, what the f- This game it seems, like, really unforgiving. <laughs> Oh, and the boots run out. Yeah. That's... Oh! This is just the Kung Fu boss, the, the boomerang. Try the next stage. Good luck. Ah! Dicks. This is brutal. Like, you're just getting it from three th three ways here. And I can't... I, since I don't have a high jump, I can't get up there to do anything about those guys. I would, I would hide something here if I was... Oh, great. Oh, fuck. Brutal. Brutal. I, hmm, man. Okay. Like, is there a way to continue? Or, I mean, I assume there is. There always is. Let's check real quick here. Up and start. Nice and easy. Backed him down. He just showed him my shield and he walked away. The arcade version is pretty different. I remember there being like spots in the level that would be flashing 
and when you um, when you were there, you jumped high instead of having like the collectible high jump boots or whatever. I think that's how they handled it. Ah, damn it! Bad jump. walk with your shield out. Not an option. But also I can kill fish on this shield, which is nice. This game is really good at just giving you like nine things to worry about at once. It's kind of crazy. That guy wasn't shit. We get some elevator action here. Yeah, this flickering, you know, I kind of think about, you know, is, should I, uh... Up and start again. Let's see. Where does that does it put us at the top of the elevator again? I assume. Okay, that's not so bad. Um, you know, there are things you can do in NES emulators to, uh, you know, reduce some sprite flickering and stuff. Um. Some of the stuff where it's like the score is flickering down and stuff. I don't know about that, but... Um, and of course, the, the way the screen draws at the bottom, that's stuff that was, you know, kind of never meant to be seen. Yeah, oh man. Oh, I still take damage on block on that, huh? gonna chip me out. Oh, that was not a backwards jump. I like that it is going like fighting game rules here, like I never turn my back on him when we're when we're in that fight. Oh good. Oh good, more of this. Ah, oh, these fuck this fucking guy. I'm just gonna go, guys.
See you later, sucker. Oh, these bomb balls. What now? Oh, shit! Holy smokes! That guy was not fucking around. He's like, I look like you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh god. And this starts me at the top of elevator one, not elevator two, right? It sure does. guys in the bag. I like his willingness to just swing. Just like, check this out. Check out what I can do. I can do it up to four times. I'm pretty sure I beat this game when I was a kid. Still hits. Fuck. Oh, that's funny. Oh, damn it. Took way too much damage there. See how this goes this time. A little better. Went a little better that time. know what that was. Maybe one of the three things had something better in it or something.
Okay, now we gotta fight another one of these fucking assholes. I feel like only that level with the mountains where you had the guys shooting down from above was really something that felt like, you know, unfair. It's kind of the thing I'd say about the rest of this game is like it, it feels like it lives by its own rules and you can, you know, do your shit to it the same way it would do to you. Like, it's a lot of annoying mechanics that you, you know, well, annoying is not the right word. It's a, it's a lot of, like, you can die real fast, and so you have to be careful. You know? That guy ain't shit. Kind of just another elevator level. Nice. If you jump and if you hit him with the cape from the side, uh, then you'll always get the the one ups. Uh, the reuse of boss fights, not really, uh, not really all that awesome. Let's try the final stage, really? I can't get to him. <laughs> this is bad. Dick. It's okay, his aim is really bad as long as I keep moving. Oh no, I don't jump at him. I I I don't jump at him. I I just stand up. Right? That's his, that's the anti-air there. Fuck. great shape here. Pretty sure this is my last life. Oh, shit.
Well, I feel like I've... Well, let's, oh, look. I feel like I've seen everything I need to see in order to put this game on a list, but... Oh my god! Alright, yeah. We'll give it, uh, maybe one more continue here. I don't know, this is, uh, this is going bad. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Dude. How do they disarm me? The, the knife guy will throw out like a little bomb. And if you block that, then, uh... Key thing to remember, this guy's a bad aim as long as you keep moving. You just gotta keep moving. off. You too. Oh! They distracted me by giving me the high boots. And how? And they knew how excited I would be to murder these motherfuckers. I'm trying to getting like the getting your block up is actually weirdly tricky. All right, now what? Uh oh. <laughs> okay, stay away from that, I guess. I took a lot of damage there. I don't know if, you know, I'm going to have to do better on this one if we want to suck it out. <laughs> one more. One more, then we'll move on. One more! Then we'll move on. gotta be willing to stuff these knife guys, you know? What controller do I use? I'm currently using a DualSense Edge. Only the finest <laughs> in $200 controllers for these classics. Good. Okay. All right, how do I get in on this fucking guy? Fuck. 
Nope, that doesn't do it. That's not... I, I thought maybe if I stood there and blocked it, and I would be there right when he came out. And uh, we tested that theory with no lives left. But that might have worked if I just waited past that initial... God damn it. God damn it. What am I doing? All right, Trojan. It's the minute you stop. You just get bogged down by shit, you know? I don't know why this guy isn't jumping, but that's fine. enough health to even stand close to these rocks. That's not close enough for me to hit him. I don't know how I'm supposed to get in without taking damage. Yeah, that's weird. I guess there's your answer. Uh-oh. One shot, half my health. Where's this continue gonna put me? Okay. At least we get a chance to... I was thinking, can I jump in and... There's just enough pushback on his hit that I can't corner him. <sighs> See, if I can do that in a row perfect eight times... That jump in th strategy might work, but it's 
So I wonder if I can just like get in. Okay. Like that? No, there's not enough. <laughs> Damn it. So I have to let him come out of the corner. But he pushes me to the right range. So I can... Gotta find it. Am I swinging too early? Yeah. We need a lot of room to work with here, so we're gonna... Let him come across the screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm I think I'm attacking too early. He's not going to be too far out of range. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So he's got timing no matter what. But... Seems like I kind of want to back out of range and then jump in when he's not going. Ugh, I let off the button. Three neutral jump overheads? I don't even know where I would get that in. Neutral jumps. That sounds like some tool-assisted type shit to me. Ugh. Nope, my timing was all wrong. I think. I don't know. It's hard to... This is... Okay. Alright. Easy. What a hot jam here at the end. Oh, the world will be in peace again. We praise your love and courage that has carried us through. Oh, do we get to see everybody's name? I sure hope so. Mamushi! Iron Arm! Give it up for Iron Arm. Armadilla Dillion. Armadillon, I guess. Goblin. Sure. Muscler. Trojan. What am I? Wait, what about me? 
King Shriek! And your boy, Achilles. All right, Trojan. I don't think I got any of the retro achievements there because I was continuing, right? They must have made them all such that you uh, can only get them from starting from the beginning. Oh, well. All right, that's Trojan. What, uh, let's think about Trojan. Uh, I think Trojan's pretty good. It's repetitive. Uh, it is a little brutal at times. Um, some of the level design is a little funky. Um, it's a very particular pace where you have to kind of, well, I don't know. Sometimes you have to slow it down, but then there's, there's definitely like an aspect of it of just like, no, you have to fucking go. Like, does like, if you, if you sit here and, and let these enemies collect on screen and throw shit at you, you're, you're, it's way more to deal with. So you're, you're almost better off to keep moving. Especially because the levels are pretty short. Yeah. Music's not great. I thought the, the, the first level, I thought that it was the first level music was pretty good, but. Um, I think it's better than low G man, the low gravity man. Is it better or worse than muscle? It's better. Is it better than Kung Fu? It's a very similar game, weirdly enough. Um, but I think if we're, if we're being honest with ourselves, Trojan is our new number four. It's not as good as Kung Fu. Kung Fu is like cinema. You know? Uh, you know, you only see those bosses once. I mean, you play it over and over again. But like... Kung Fu, you get to the end of a floor. It's a, it's a unique boss. And then you go on to the next one. And so on and so forth. It is... It doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah, no, Kung Fu is uh Kung Fu is number three, Trojan is number four. All right. A lot of games on the old eight bit Nintendo. There's a lot of arcade ports. I mean Trojan is an arcade port, but we end up with this like weird thing where it's arcade ports from a lot of various times in history. And so we also end up with like ports of Burger Time coming to the NES, even though that was a 1982 game. That game's older than the Famicom. Um, and a lot of these games, you know, that were originally on vertical monitors, when they bring them to the NES, they do a bunch of junk to them. You know, this game, they stretch it out to four by three. That's probably the right move. Maybe it changes some of the pacing on uh, some of these levels or something, but um, well, from the attract mode, this looks like a this looks like Burger Time. Let's find out. For starters, in the arcade version, you can move while that initial bit of music is playing. Get up here. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta use your pepper. You always wanna save it. I mean, if you're using pepper to get pepper, then really, what's the point? Ugh! Mr. Hot Dog got me. Right in my business. This is like a decent rendition of the Burger Time music and all that stuff. I don't... Like I said, I don't I don't think it's quite as good as the arcade game. Nice really bassy when you're walking over the parts. The blah, 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 like that's a really good uh really good effect.
Oh! The ranges on getting away from the food uh, seem a little less forgiving in this version than they are in the arcade. You can kind of get away with some shit. Uh, that, that sometimes feels a little weird in the arcade version, as far as, like, hitboxes are concerned. That music there at the end was a mess. Oh, gosh. Ultimately, you know, despite having platforms and ladders and, and such, like, this is kind of a maze game. You know, it's not entirely dissimilar to, like, a Pac-Man. You know, just the, the movement rules are a little different. Why is that coffee cup still there? I got it. Oh, we're fucked now. Like, try to get them all there so I could pepper them all at once, but nothing doing. Kind of the other thing, it's just, Burger Time is sort of a brutal video game. Mr. Pickle Chip is here to really fuck shit up. Oh, it was out of pepper. I didn't even realize. Yeah. I mean, that's about how well I do in the arcade version of Burger Time, to be honest. Um, I think games like this are, are, are a hard sell. You know, you, you think about... Um, the age of this game and some of the, you know, just the, the idea of paying console prices for a not great port of burger time. Something that I think everyone, we were all happy to do in, in, with some previous platforms, but I think for whatever reason, this is where I kind of started hitting my limit on this as a consumer, um, where it was just like, man, I, you know, I love Burger Time, but I want to play Burger Time like twice and then not touch it for a month or more, you know? Uh, the idea of owning, you know, this version of Burger Time, just, there's not a lot of appeal there as far as I'm concerned. This type of shallow arcade port was, you know, some of the stuff we saw on previous generations of hardware. You know, the 2600 and, of course, Atari's home computers, the 50, you know, the 5200 and stuff. I feel like that stuff was a little more acceptable then. But I know I definitely hit my... Hit a wall. I hit, I hit my wall on that just conceptually. Whoa! Nice of them to give you a little grace period on the on the hot dog spawns. Two hot dogs, that should go all the way down, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. Okay. 
Wait, that's tactically not going to work. This level's a mess. Oh, no pepper left. Look at the meat. Look at the number. Look at the number next time. No pepper. How, oh, wait. I can't even get out of here. Oh, wait. Okay. We got to try to fake him out. Uh-oh. Instead, we got faked out. Like, I can't do... Okay, so we just gotta, I guess, get over here. Fuck. This sucks. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, th this, I, I feel like it's a, it's a pretty good port of Burger Time, and I do like Burger Time, but I, I like, in this context of NES games, I, I don't think that Burger Time just, I don't think it has a lot of room here, you know? Um, uh, I would take it over Lunar Pool. Well, I mean, Lunar Pool has a lot. No, Lunar Pool has a lot of levels, but it's 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 they're all bad. Like the problem with Lunar Pool is that it's not a good, ga not a good game. <laughs> it's my main issue with it. Um, Kid Nicky, Kid Nicky's a hard one because I I uh, again before we started this, I would have said that Kid Nicky is an awesome game. What a great game! But, uh, you know, as we spent some time with it, realized, no, it's, it's really, it's, it's really not. It's really not. Um. And so, Burger Time is our new number eight. It's no Wrecking Crew. But I'd rather play Burger Time than Kid Nicky. Despite Kid Nicky having more going for it and, you know, like in terms of like level size and, and stuff, but, um, this sounds like it's melted. So let's take the plunge on a different list here. We have, I guess this is just, this is, it's 45 calories. So it still, I think qualifies under our kind of low calorie. It's also a lot of condensation on this from sitting here. Wipe this can down a little bit. Um, in case you have, uh, here, I'll, I'll swap lists here. In case you have forgotten, Faxicondi, the drinks, I believe they're Danish. Have been some of the worst energy drinks that we have encountered. They, they showed up in the mail. I was very excited to try all of these. This, I believe, I'm pretty... Unless there's another one hiding in there somewhere. This is the last one. And it is the original. It is just Faxicondi Booster. It is not Twisted Strawberry or Juicy Agrim. Um... It has no other, well, the other ones, there was another one that said original on it, but this one, it just doesn't say anything on it. So I don't, I don't really know what to make of it. These have all been abysmal beverages. One of the worst, one of the worst substance, the worst substance I have ever had in my mouth. Yes, I'm including battery acid. Maybe this will be the good one. It 
smells like a Red Bull. It just smells like a, it, it smells like a, it smells like a, a zero calorie Red Bull. Could it be? Could it be? It's just a Red Bull. It's just, a, it's an, it's, it's an off-brand Red Bull. Oh, thank God. Oh. I so did. I was so not ready for this to be another one of those bottom of the barrel drinks. Like it ain't good. But it ain't bad. You know how regular rock star tastes like just like a generic off brand Red Bull and like some of those other drinks like that, you know? Oh. Man, this is uh compared to those other drinks, I could drink twenty of these. Should off brand Red Bulls get their own category? I mean they're kinda all the same, sort of, but uh Which I suppose means, well, you know, hey, we should probably look and see where some of those other ones ended up. There's like a rock star old school or what are, what are the original? No, what did they call it? It was OG. Yeah, at uh, the Rockstar Throwback Edition sugar-free OG flavor is a, a little bit better than this, I would say. But extremely similar. And so, what that means is, We have our new number 98 cracking the top 100. Congratulations to Faxicondi Booster, the, the, the one with no other name on it. Drink of the Millennium, Danish edition. A drink you could drink. Now don't, but you could. I'm so happy that... Oh, I'm so happy that this drink is not... Like, fucking abysmal like the other ones are, man. Oh. Alright. Let's get back to our game list here. And, uh... And move on uh, to another arcade port. Where is it? Here it is. This game is important uh, in its own weird way. Where did it go? Donkey Kong. When designing the Famicom, the designers looked at the Donkey Kong arcade hardware and said, let's make something that's a little bit like this. And honestly, I think when you look at this port of Donkey Kong, I, this is how I remember it. You know, we'll have to get in and play it here in a minute. I remember it as being not great. I remember it as being disappointing. And also on top of that, it's the sort of thing that is, uh, you know, when you're comparing it to now, you know, when we think about this in United States, in, in North American terms, the thing to remember is that in Japan, this was like a launch game. 
Um, here, it was also a launch game, but the launch happened years later. And so this game came out the same day, more or less, as Super Mario Brothers. And so just from a comparison standpoint, and it came out in 1985, you know, Donkey Kong was, was like, what, 81 or 80? It says 81 here. Um, and uh, that made it very hard to stomach back at that time. You know, it's like, hey, it was basically like the same price for all the games. And so the idea of like, well, you get Super Mario Brothers or you get Donkey Kong and it's this port of the game that doesn't have the introduction you know it's missing the analog sound hardware that made the original arcade game so crunchy And it's missing a level. It does not have the pie factory. Donkey Kong had three le uh, four levels. A lot a lot of the home ports did not have the pie factory. Uh, because that ver that level has like conveyor belts and so things are kind of moving on their own it is i'm guessing logic that is you know it is different than the other levels and so there's there's more stuff there uh that wouldn't you know maybe wouldn't fit on a cartridge or wouldn't you know so so for whatever reason um that level basically doesn't really appear in most of the home ports. I think it's interesting that this, you know, this is a... a they didn't, uh, they did not make this into the United States arcade version either, which is probably for the best. Um, in the Japanese version of the game, you the game has four levels and you play them all in a row and then you do them again. Uh, over and over again, forever. And that's that. Um, in the U.S., they decided to change it to make it, like, last longer. So instead, what they did is they made it so on your first... Basically, like, they broke it up into worlds, almost. In the, in the first run, you played the first level that we just played, or the, the very first level with the girders, and, or I'm sorry, with, with the barrels, and then this level with the girders. You killed Donkey Kong, and then went back to level one, and then on your second time through, the elevator stage was included in your loop for the first time. And then you, so there were three levels, much like the, the rotation that we're getting here. And then you had to beat those three levels, and then go back to level one, and then on your, what, third time through, you would finally get all four levels. And so most players in the U.S. never fucking saw the Pie Factory because of the way that that stuff was structured. Because it was, you know, you need to fucking play a lot of it, man.
I don't like the the jump sound or any of the walking sounds in this version of the game compared to the I, I I'd say that about almost all of the home ports. I think the the sound in the arcade game is is cool. Like the sound he makes just when he's moving and like the the way they sound here, it's just like it's just, yeah, too high pitched, too squeaky or something. There's just it doesn't it doesn't sound right. Also, the jump has, like, a sadness to it, if that makes any sense. Like, nah, nah, nah. The jump sounds sad in this version of the game. And I don't like it. Yay. I don't know why that guy's flipping out and going back and forth so much, but I don't like it. This is I I'm all I this is already uh, uh like why am I still playing this? Yeah, I'm just getting reckless now because I don't care. Take the long way around, those elevators are moving pretty fast. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I guess I would have had to. I keep running forward and juke under him now that they're going that fast and kind of hit it on the way back. Gotta fake him out.
That's right. I'm trying to think what other, you know, the Atari home computer version of this was all right for whatever, you know, for what it was. Well, now I kind of want to see if I can break 80,000 because there's another achievement there. Oh, got sloppy. Got sloppy, and here we are. Yeah, the ColecoVision version was not terrible. Uh, I thought the 2600 version, for what it was, was okay. And, you know, that the, the Donkey Kong from the 2600 version is such a broken-looking character that he is uh, currently the logo of our Discord server. If, you, if you're not on that Discord server and you want to get on it, Head over to Patreon.com. I'm over here. Head over to Patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. You can hop on that server. And this music, where did this come from? Was this... Was this the first time this little ditty appeared? Because it's not in the arcade version of Donkey Kong, I don't think. This is from, yeah, oh, oh, it came up, oh, they, they came up with it for Donkey Kong Country? Yeah, that's, that's probably what happened there. Donkey Kong Country. Blech. Blech. But Donkey Kong, what's up with that? Um, it's not as good as Wrecking Crew. Is it better than Burger Time? I wonder if we're going to end up with like a glut of arcade ports all around this spot on the list. Of, of the kind of single screen arcade games and, and, and whatnot. Burger Time is funky. I, I, don't, I don't think it's a... I, you know, but Donkey Kong is missing a... A whole level, but so many of the home ports were, it's kind of hard to... Well, it's no... They sat down and said, let's make hardware. We've, we've made Donkey Kong. It's popular, all that sort of stuff. But, and they still couldn't even get a, a level in there. But I, Donkey Kong just feels better. Like the movement and stuff still feels better uh, than, than Burger Time does. Even missing a level, I think Donkey Kong is just a better game than Burger Time. You know, that's not... I don't feel like that's controversial... Uh, next up is a game that I returned. Next up is a game that I had for a while and then said, this is a... I hate this. And we returned it and I bought something else. I could always employ my father in those sorts of endeavors because adults can return things, kids can't. Um, Where is it? Okay, yeah. So let's... Let's fire this up. The precursor to River City Ransom, a little game known here in the United States of America as Renegade. Um... This game uses uh, Double Dragon 2 style directional attacks. I suppose years before Double Dragon 2 would use them. Uh, and so your left button attacks left, your right button attacks right. And like a lot of beat em ups, your back attack is, is like pretty powerful. And so the trick is finding ways to make sure, because he'll auto face. You don't really determine which way he's aiming. And then you have to figure out a way to get him with your foot. And this is it. This is the whole level. It's a beat him up with, it's, it's a belt action game with no freaking belt. Oh, I can I can double tap to run. You can kind of do some jump kicks and stuff. And 
Also, we can mount them. Oh! I fucking hate this game so much. Everything about the way it feels, the range on your punch, like so many situations end up being trades. Because you're punching and they're punching. But at least you can throw guys off the edge like that, which is pretty good. The arcade version of this is a better game, but I, I don't know that I think it's a... I don't know that I would say that I think it's a good game. <laughs> Fuck this. I... Oh, God. We got a boss fight. Cannot mount and punch the bosses, they will throw you off until you get them down to near the end there. Ah, yes, Mr. K. You ain't tough enough for me, says Mr. K. You know, Kunio. Throw him. It's not fucking doing it. Oh my god. I think this game just sucks. I fucking hate this game. Still. To this day. Beat it, scum. Let me check on something real quick here.
Sorry, just need a moment here. My wife needs some assistance with something. It will only be a moment. Okay. Fuck this game. Piece of garbage. I hate this game so much. I hate this game so much. Again, the arcade version is like slightly better, but. We got the S. That hitching is fr from it loading up the achievement icon there, which is less than ideal. Retro Achievements has been uh, doing a lot of back-end work. Their website was down for a week or so there. Seems like it is up. And I believe they said it would be mostly stable here, but maybe it is still slow in responding to some requests, because that used to not happen. Beat me with their purses and also chains. Ooh, a heart. That was cool, I guess. So when I got this on the NES, I had not seen the arcade version, so this was kind of my first exposure to it. And, you know, potentially that's why I think the arcade version is is a better, because, you know, anything's better than this fucking thing.
It's just so monotonous, man. It, First beat em up ever? I don't well what came out first, Renegade or Double Dragon One? I mean Double Dragon One is kind of This this came out first, didn't it? Get a lot of really silly noises on the jump kicks in these games. Oh, is this there's like a maze here, isn't there? Yuck. Let's try left. Nope. These guys are technically still bosses, so we can't... Try right. Probably not where we want to be. They just keep coming. I was like, how about just fight three enemies for a, a really long time? Oh, I don't, I don't want to do that. Try this way. Okay, so we went left from this room last time. Let's do that again, and then we'll go left again in the room that follows.
get... I didn't mean to mount him that time. Fuck. Oh, he... I didn't realize that they would, uh... That they would also shrug off the grapple. Not good. Not in a good place. Mentally. Empty life bar. No. Where does this even put me? Okay. Like, I can't push down. I can't walk down after doing that because it automatically tries to mount. Oh, here we go. Great, great. Fucking great. What a great time we're all having here. Garbage. I hate this game so goddamn much. Fuck you. Abysmal fucking garbage. I hate this game so much. I hate it even more now. Oh. An absolute piece of garbage. Renegade. I, uh... Really need to do some thinking here on the list here. I'm trying to remove some of my feelings from it, some of my anger, and try and try and look at it evenly, try to be fair. Uh I would rather play Lunar Pool than Renegade. Hmm. I would... I would rather play Captain Skyhawk than Renegade. Fuck Renegade. Fuck Renegade. Our new number 13 in the top 20 of best NES games of all time. God, I hate that game. Oh, what a miserable experience. All right. Here's another one I had as a kid. 
that I also don't necessarily have super fond memories of. I kind of want to get out of the, the comfort zone here in terms of, uh, you know, games I, I remember a little bit. Uh, though, you know, I, I trafficked in a lot of NES games back in the day, including Tiger Heli. Reasonably well regarded as an arcade game. Uh, Tiger Heli is a uh, scrolling shooter. One button drops bombs and the other one shoots missiles. We need to figure out which right now. Okay, we guessed right. Maybe I should cover up some of the uh, overscan. It's really disorienting in some of these scrolling shooters like this. Was this a thing? I can't remember if it is or not. This, it's not Xanak. That's not a thing. Oh, no. All right, well. We got hit and dropped our one bomb as kind of a fail-safe sort of thing, I guess, is how that works. What the f What happened there? I was shooting, I was dumping. This was another game I did uh, my best to get rid of. Um, you know, I was never like the uh, um, like a necessarily a massive fan of the scrolling shooter per se, but like uh, I certainly had my time with them. It was that you you couldn't not really because um, that's there were a lot of them. I think when it comes to vertically scrolling shooters, I tend to prefer games where you're on foot. Commando or Gunsmoke or Akari Warriors or something, you know? Yeah, Rip, well, River Raid is a great game. River Raid is a classic. I would take River Raid over a lot of the games we've played so far. Well, that didn't last long. And we lost an instrument along the way. There's a monotony to this that, for my money, sets in almost immediately. You know, you're just like, I don't... You have two bombs and no little heli. I didn't real I guess I didn't realize that Acclaim published this game here in the States. Can you continue in Tiger Heli? That's my question.
Hold A and B when you get game over. And then hit start, or did I did I need to hold it earlier? Yeah, apparently we needed to hold that earlier. Thanks, fandom. I think some of the, you know, the, the enemy, the way the enemies shoot. Oh, jeez. Don't leave you with a lot of wiggle room in this game, which is, you know. I do like that there's plenty of opportunities to blow up what looks like houses and regular cars. You know, civilian infrastructure. Like, that. but that man, that's... That didn't, uh, that spread on that did not hit any of the targets I wanted to hit. Little Heli! Me a little Heli! Heard of firepower. Yeah, this, but yeah, as a kid, this game did practically nothing for me. You know, I was just like, ugh. What can I say? I guess I was always more of a 1942 man. Classic music of 1942 we, that we all love. Ah! I would, like, you want to get behind him as soon as possible so you can shoot him, but then they shoot not long after appearing on screen and do not give you... A a great opportunity all yeah see man maybe I seem to be better about biding my time on those and not go back and get them
the change in music has the vibe of, like, something that's going to go away soon, you know? Oh! Made it further, got fewer points. How does that work? Unfair. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a... I'm not a big Tiger Heli fan, to be honest. Um, I just don't, I just don't think it feels great. Uh, mechanically simple. Enemy patterns a little lacking. Um, let's let's uh, let's take it to the list here. Would I rather play Burger Time? Yes. Is it better than Kid Nikki? Mm. No. Is it better than Lunar Pool? You know what? One thing I do know for sure. Is that it's better than Captain Skyhawk. That Faxicondi booster got in my eye. What's going to happen now? Am I going to gain supervision? It splashed in my eye. It burns. Oh. Oh. We're okay. We're okay. All right. Next up. Classic Concentration, based on the television program produced by the Concentration Company. Classic Concentration was one of the reasons I most wanted to stay home from school and pretend to be sick. At least the, the, the game show on television. This, I don't think I've ever, I don't know that I've ever played this. I have played home versions of Classic Concentration before. But I don't know that I've ever played this one. I'm hitting start as hard as I can. There we go. Would I like to enter a game code? No. One player. How come, like, a third of the guys in this game look like Ray Romano? Let's go with, uh... What? Whoopee, Glenn. You got the boat. Glenn gets to go again. He's got to pick two more. Number 15? 25. Ooh, a wild card. That means I just get whatever I... All right. The music, I think, ruins this because I think the the actual game show has some pretty good sound effects when you open the doors or like a da -da 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 kind of thing that I, I think worked pretty well. Or something. That looks like an or. 
There's a Rebus under here, by the way. Motorcycle. Viciara. Remember that. It's gonna come in handy. Sofa. Mink coat. Spa. Oh, we knew. We knew spa. Asian trip was eight, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, Glenn remembered that too. Damn it. Or egg. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Or egg. Or a gom. Let's try it. Or a ga me. Spelling, spelling this right, right? right. Oh, another wild card. All right, let's uh, let's get this because it'll probably help us. Or egg light. Or egg bulb. Or egg light pot E. Or it. Is that a pot and an eye? Or egg. Light. Mm. Sofa. Oh, damn it. We opened sofa before. We screwed up. I think we screwed up. Feels like enough of them are gone that Glenn's just going to guess it now. Ooh, sofa. Okay, so sofa was 10, right? Nope. It was China, but China was 22? Yeah. We win China. Oregon Trail. This is not the. This is so barely the vibe of the. This is an Alex Trebek hosted game show, and it was not a yeehaw kind of game show. I don't know. Microwave books. Wallpaper. Surfboard water skis. Brass bed golf clubs. We saw a golf club, yeah. There's that filthy egg again. Whoopee. The pacing on this is... I feel like that's the problem with the pacing on a lot of game show translations of this era for a lot of platforms, whether it was this or I played a lot of card sharks on the Commodore 64 and, and it's just a similar thing of like it just everything takes forever. brass bed that I pulled up earlier. Was microwave the first one? Yeah. Eggs. Multiple eggs. Some kind of prisoner here. Uh, 
uh, that was surfboard and that was water skis, right? Hand eggs. Foot eggs? That should count. Brass bed was like 12 or something. Oh, well, fuck you. That's looking like a foot. He's trying to guess the puzzle. Uh, but he, got the, we get, he got the wrong answer, and we don't even get like a fake wrong answer. I think that's such bullshit. That's a hand, okay. Bacon and eggs, because they're cons. There's a prisoner. Hand eggs. Yep. Bah, hey, con. Hand eggs. Sure. Sure. Lawn mower houseboat. Scuba gear jet ski. Suck it, Glenn. You and your range. I hate this. It has like none of the vibe of the game show. Just like all this music is wrong for it. Oh, scuba gear, was that? Yeah. Is it a hook? Chinook? Chinook something. Oh man, I, I, I was thinking about the overall puzzle when he guessed, and now I don't. Oh, we screwed that up bad. Handed it to him. Handed it to him. Sun? What is that over there? Chinook salmon. Okay. The only Chinook I am aware of is a helicopter, so... Sa-ham on. Oh, right, the on. Yeah. Your game code is HRBF. Press start to play another game. Great. I don't... 
No. No, we're not going to play any more of this. Classic concentration. I think game show games, like, you don't see as many of them as you used to, but also there are way fewer game shows nowadays, right? So it kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I, I feel like it's a miserable... I, I, I guess like I feel like it's a pretty miserable representation of classic concentration. Like the rules are there in just some form, but it's kind of not. Again, the the vibe is is all wrong. Um, as as someone who's something of a fan of proper classic concentration, I'm not really happy with that. Um. But it does not inspire vitriol the same way. It inspires, it inspires a different type of vitriol, I guess, against the shitty computer opponents that are obviously cheating. You know, this sucks. That's a shitty. That's shitty. This is shitty. This is a shitty game. Like the AI clearly cheats and just gets guesses in a row. And and like, no, it's 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 bad. Like a lot of game show games are bad. This is a bad one. This is worse than Lunar Pool. It's worse than Tiger Heli. And, uh... And it is worse than Captain Skyhawk, but not as bad as Renegade. Classic concentration. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Next on the list is kind of a weird one. Um, this is not the platform you come to. Like, the, the, you don't come to this platform for this game. You don't come to the NES to play Load Runner. In Japan, Load Runner got a weird boost of popularity. Um, and so there were a lot of console ports and stuff that happened. Um, and so these are the same levels from the computer game Load Runner. But because they had to stretch it all out and make it cute... It no longer all fits on a on a single screen. And uh I think that's bad. I think this game is best as a single screen game. In case you've never played it, you need to get all the gold, and once you get all the gold, a ladder appears at the top of the stage. Other versions of this game appear in the Jeff Gerstmann Hall of Fame, in fact. Uh, Load Runner is an amazing, astounding classic. We love to get the gold. We truly do. Um, and then, yeah, when, when Hudson got a hold of it, it kind of just took on this vague Bomberman-esque sort of vibe. Uh, there's a game called Battle Load Runner on the Turbo Graphics that is kind of interesting because they're trying to make like a multiplayer Load Runner. Can't dig on those blocks. Nope. 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 Gotta go around. I was checking to see if you could like pause it and scroll the screen because I, I think that's the the crime this version of the game commits is is not putting it all on a single screen. Because it just gets hard to tell like what's going on where. Like, am I walking into an enemy? Like, is there a, is there a piece of gold somewhere sitting on the other half of the level? Or is are one of the guards carrying it? 
Like, you walk into situations like that, where you're just like, oh, fuck. Like, because, you know, by the time that guy appears on screen, he's already so close that I can't dig a hole. And that, I think that makes the game significantly worse. Which is a bummer, because I, you know, like, otherwise, I think this is a, like, acceptable version of the game. Like, the enemies behave the way that they did in the original, and so... You know, it, it's accurate in most other ways, uh, and so that's kind of that's kind of makes it frustrating, you know, because you're like, man, this is like close to being really awesome. this away. So in some ways that's, you know, almost worse, right? Where you've got this legendary puzzle game, action puzzler, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it that is kind of, you know, notably reduced by the way that they had to, you know, tile it or whatever you want to say. Uh, the way they handled the graphics. They made everybody too big. Too big, too cute. Too much Japan up in this. Almost. Any y'all holding? Nope. Well, then where am I going? I guess there's got to be some over here. Ah. swingy little you know like i think the music's pretty good you know like what they did to it there here's the this is this kind of loses some context here by not being seen on a single screen this is the broderbund logo broderbund is the company that originally published load runner for home computers through that gold there. That's not cool. Apple doing there. Fuck. Yeah, see? Like, if you... Mm, this is... What a fucking frustrating version of this game. I hate it. I hate this. didn't need to be this way. Maybe it did. I don't know what I, I've never made a Famicom game, but by making it this way, 
they have taken a fantastic video game and fucked it all up. None of them have gold. Well, then where is it? There it is. Oh, no apple this time. I hate this. Yeah, the situational awareness thing is, is a real... Real bummer. Didn't need to be this way. I, well, I, I should stop saying that. The one nice thing I'll say about it is that uh, a lot of home computers at the time used one-button joysticks. And the game was really originally designed to be played with a, in a two-button configuration... Much like Renegade, uh, the buttons are directional. One is dig left and one is dig right. Um, so you can very easily dig behind you if you need to. Fuck off. Is there a technical reason this wasn't on one screen? I, I don't know, you know? Like, it could be just like, hey, resolution, and, you know, if they they couldn't achieve the look they wanted with smaller sprites, I would think. Maybe on a television, it would just look weird if they had much smaller tiles and, and like, all that, you know? Yeah, but the resolution of TVs, the size of TVs, and, and some of that stuff probably... Probably mattered. Yeah, hardware limitations of the, the NES and... How it expected graphics to be drawn. That probably matters. Yeah, the scrolling could have maybe been done better. I don't yeah. Maybe that would have helped mitigate some of the problems. I don't know. Also, there's a, just a touch of slowdown. That sucks! If you'd seen that guy coming, you would have made a different call. Mm. And if we hit the select key, we can go ahead and select any stage. Much like Wrecking Crew. Here's level 50.
It's a shame that there, you know, like we, we played a lot of arcade ports today. It's a shame that there aren't more uh, arcade classics on the platform. Like a Mr. Do, for example. Uh, but, you know, Mr. Do is, is such a powerful game. 8-bit hardware probably wouldn't be able to contain it. You have to wait for the SNES to come out to truly get a great version of Mr. Do. Anyway, I, Load Runner. I love Load Runner. I love it. It is. It is. It is in the Jeff Gersman Hall of Fame. You can find that video on YouTube right now. The latest installment of the Jeff Gersman Hall of Fame just went up last night. It is a Patreon exclusive. You can go find that at Patreon.com/slash Jeff Gerstman. That means the previous episode is now publicly available on YouTube, uh, where you can see hot classic Jumpman. And Jumpman Jr. make their way into the hall. Um, and that new, I did not realize it until I was cutting it last night. Uh, or cutting it, th you know, throwing the, the bumpers on it, I guess, really. Um, that, uh, that latest Hall of Fame video that went up last night, it's like two hours long. I did not think it was anywhere near that long as I was recording it, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Um... This is an abomination of a video game. I'm so sad about it because it is an amazing game it, ruined, ruined by the platform upon which it appears. And, um, it's disappointing. It's unfortunate that it, that it ended up that way. It did not need to be this way. I don't think, I think there, there's probably some other solution they could have hit upon or just not done it. But, uh, as I understand it, Load Runner as a console game would go on to be a pretty popular thing in Japan. Uh, there were arcade versions of Load Runner, which is a, mi a mind blowing concept. Go, go watch. We, I, we, I get into some of that in the Hall of Fame video, so I won't just recap the history of the game here. But those levels are the same. The AI behavior is largely the same as the the classic original game, but the scrolling screen ruins it. It just ruins it. So I don't see a way for this to appear on the top half of the list, which is, uh, you know, distressing. I would rather play Burger Time. I would, I would rather play Kid Nicky. I would rather, hmm, yeah, you know what? We're going to put that right there. And Load Runner. Is our new number 12. I would rather play Bad Load Runner over Tiger Heli. And certainly over Captain Skyhawk. Certainly. Um, this led me to, as, as I was uh, sketching out the list for uh, today's list of games, uh, it led me to a thought about another game that perhaps uh, appeared on the NES and maybe, maybe just maybe didn't belong there. But I have not played this version of the game in a very, very long time. So, um, we'll just have to see. I have very fond memories of this game, but not this version of it. It's Spy vs. Spy. Largely designed as a multiplayer game, White Spy versus Black Spy. And so it is a split screen game, even when you're playing alone. Your goal is to, uh, what, get the briefcase with all the items in it, and then escape. Uh, the different objects in a room can hold items. You can also place traps in them, which is what the Black Spy is doing right there. Then he went to look at the map and see where the items he needs to collect, in fact, are. He's got the briefcase, which is, uh, you know, that's the that's the key one. You want that one first if you can get it. In fact, why don't we go through training just, and we'll see if that, uh, that's interesting they have a training mode. Like they assumed no one was ever going to read the manual. Oh, no, it's just going. All right, we've got an umbrella. We don't need that. 
All right, we have one item here. Oh, oh. So in the original version of the game, you had swords. And it wasn't just quite... It, it was mostly a button mashing. It was more of a joystick shaking battle. Oh, did I just find a sword? Is that... Did they make it a collectible item? It's, yeah, they did. Look at that. That's interesting. So that's not in the original game. That's that's something different they did. All right, so now we've got a briefcase. We've got two items. We know that the two items we need are below us. There's one in here. And one in here. All right, now we need to find the airport and leave. And we did. We win. I love Spy vs. I love. I was a. I was a big Mad Magazine fan growing up. Uh, so I always liked Spy vs. Spy. They would expand upon this concept in two sequels that were basically the same thing, except one was on an island and one was uh, on like an arc. One was Arctic Antics, which was in the snow. Um. Oh, so in training mode, you don't need to get all the items. You can just get the bag and any one item and then, and then leave. So that's the only... Okay, I see. Um, so the other thing you can do is you can place traps. So I can, like, take a bomb and put it in that painting. And then when he goes to check the painting, he, it, it, it will blow him up. Unless I forget that I put it there and, uh, you know, open it up myself. And I can look at his screen and see that he is placing things. In fact, I think we... I think we have put bombs on the last two items. Which is perhaps unfortunate. Oh, we put it on the door. Or did I just blow up as soon as I walked in there? That's weird. Nope, he, tra he, put, he put multiple traps in the same room. Yeah, you have a spring, you have a- you can trap doors with like a... bucket. Oh! Like that! music from the original game it's not great <laughs> it's not a great rent you know it's not the best rendition of it all right we got to find one last item here is it well let's okay it's all in here we've got it all let's go we win again Like, this is a, you know, this is an okay version of this game. I think it's just a little less... The Commodore 64 version has better music. I think the combat is better because instead of, um... Instead of just mashing the button... Well, this is going to sound dumb. Instead of just mashing the button, you hold it down, and then you jerk back left and right on the joystick, and then that's how you stab with your sword. You always have a sword instead of the punching, and you can kind of go up and down also, so there's a little bit of high and low game there. And it just felt more like you're fucking stabbing this motherfucker. 
Um, and so I think, yeah, that, that combat felt better. You know, these, these later levels, um, the levels you see, we have staircases and all sorts of stuff, way more rooms to deal with. One of the options you could do, uh, is you could also, um, Choose to hide where the airport door was until the very end of the game, until someone had collected all of the items. And I, you know, I'm going to say just like graphical fidelity wise, I feel like that Commodore version is just better? Like, these characters probably look sharper and move a little better, but, like... Can't go that way. Oh, this is a maze. Uh, this was fun to play against another person, obviously. I mean, that's the... Whoa, why is that door not there anymore? What is... Okay. They did some weird stuff in this version of the game that was not... It was not necessarily part of the original, which that's interesting too, you know? All right, we got the briefcase. Now we can really start getting serious about getting out of here. everything that's up here. Wait, where did that briefcase go? There was nothing, there's nothing in this room for it to go into. What the hell? Normally when you drop an item in a room, it puts it... Well, it's not... What just happened then? Oops. Okay, it just puts it there, I guess. Okay, down two and... But I don't know how to get down to. That's the airport. That's where we need to go. Maybe I'll just duck this off here. In the airport room. And go look for this stuff. Without carrying it around. Surely that won't backfire. That hidden door thing is making me very angry. And then this is an empty room with no... 
Are there two... Here's my new question. Are there two staircases? Or two ladders, rather. Where is the other ladder? I don't even remember. Like, do I have to go up and then down again to get back to... not there, so it's... Yeah, there we go. What's up? Oh, I should have brought the briefcase with me because now I need to get these items out of here one at a time like a dummy. He's got the last item. So really, I mean, what we could do here is is kind of put it down to a fucking final conflict, right? Of like, I sit here. He doesn't even have the item anymore. So like, you could wait for him. Like, the thing he would have to do is come to this room with the item, kill me. Pick up the briefcase and get out. That's not fun. Also, I like how we're playing on the highest level and he just keeps blowing himself up over and over again. Like it's in this room, but downstairs, right? Oh God. So you're going to pull it out now. Because I died upstairs with the briefcase. We got all the items. Maybe we just need to go. See you later, asshole. That's right. The music is really grating here in a way that I don't I don't think it is in the original version, even though that's the same basic loop. I think it sounds a lot better on the Commodore.
Um, there's some other things in there that we didn't do. Like you'll see some medicine cabinets and stuff on the walls. I think it's some of those are like toolboxes, I guess you can find a pair of pliers in there. And so you'll find things that will kind of be counters to some of the traps, like the umbrella. If you walk through a door that has the bucket trap on it while holding an umbrella, you won't, you know, die from it. Um, that's kind of the other little, I guess, meta piece of, of gameplay there. Um, I think that this conceptually is really awesome. I, I always have. I don't know that this is the right version of it. Um, but it is still conceptually really sound. I remember when they said like, oh, we're bringing Spy vs. Spy to, I think it came out on the original Xbox. Um, and I remember being like tentatively very excited about it, right? Where it's like, oh, dude, they're going to, like do that. Like if they did that in a big way on a modern console, that could be so cool and blah, blah, blah. And, and I just, um, that game was no good. No good. <laughs> but Hey, we beat it on level eight. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I wonder, I wonder if I could get all the achievements in this because that seems like that would be the hardest thing. Unless it's like get a kill with every item. Yeah, the, the gun on the wire is not in this version of the game. You're right. That is that is missing. Like you would put a gun in a filing cabinet and then run the string over to the door. And then when they open the door, they, they would get shot and they would they would die. It's a really hard. This is a hard one to judge because I, it's it's another case of like, I think that in the in a world where that Commodore 64 game exists, like this one is pretty rotten um, comparatively, but like the concept still works. There's still a, like a lot to, to like about it. I don't know. I, I, uh, so I think I would take it over like as a single player game though. It, it is, it is bankrupt. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot going on like that. The fact that I was able to just walk through the hardest level of difficulty like that, uh, with no issue. The Commodore version was a little bit more difficult. I rem remember it being. So this is a game that you pretty much need another person to play. Um, if you're in that situation, that's great. If not, then this is a really bummer of a game. <laughs> um, so where does that have it end up? Like, It's, it's, I'm going to say it's, it's above kid Nikki. Is it above these arcade ports? Is it better than wrecking crew? No, it's not, but it's yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I and mean, we, that's going to go here. This is that's surprising. I, I expected this to be very close to the bottom of the list just because again, in my mind, I'm always comparing it to the Commodore 64 version and going like, God, this is fucking garbage. But like on its own merits, like it, it's, it's still that game conceptually. It's still that game and, and then it still works. Um, so at least there's that. Let's try to get one more. Let's try to get one more game on the list here before I got to go. Um, Congratulations to our new number eight, Spy vs. Spy. Kickle Cubicle. Kickle Cubicle. Kickle Cubicle. This is not a game I'm super familiar with. Um, I've messed with it a little bit here and there. Um... But I, I don't, I don't really know. Okay, okay, so it's kind of a pango thing, I'm seeing. Okay, so we we push the blocks to create new platforms. Got it. Oh, we got hot springs. That's kind of cool. Oh god, that's bad. Okay, let's see. Garden land.
we just get those, right? Okay. I have looked at this before, but, uh... I don't know what this other button does. It's like, it, it seems like it creates a cylinder. I guess maybe that's just a, a, like a pylon to give me like a little bit of cover or... Let's see, stop blocks from sliding. Okay, yeah, so you can kind of... What? The beautiful fantasy kingdom is now under the rule of the wizard king. That sounds good. That's good, right? The ravishing palaces were hidden. And these islands were made to confine us. Oh, that's not good. Kickle. Okay, I'm Kickle. Travis Kickle. Please get back to palaces and revive the fantasy kingdom. What do these pee balls do? Oh. Oh, I can just go. Okay. Moving forward. Very straightforward. So if I did... Oh, wait, that's... Oh, we need to do one more. All right. This music is weird. No, that's not. That's not. Great. That was a little time consuming. What we got there? I like this conceptually as a as a as a Pango fan. You know, like, I always heard the name of this game, but it never really played it. Um, until I, I fired it up the other day just to make sure I had it and then it worked or whatever, because I, I was putting it on the list for this. And, um... So can I... What, what can I do here? Do I have to go around... Oh, is that bad? Did I kill that guy? Is that, is that bad? Is it worse that I smashed him with ice? Is it... Are we friends? Am I killing... Am I killing friends? Do I need to do something else with those guys? I don't know. Oh well. All 
All right, what am I looking at here? Oh, what? Hey. Oh, he just turns back into sneaky. That's very sneaky. Well, that's useless. Okay. Pretty cool. This is cool. I like this. And they're not always going to hop at you, per se, are they? Ugh. Some of the movement, some of the stuff around, like, changing directions... You can't really change directions. Oh, I guess if I if I if I'm careful. Right, kickle cubicle. I, I don't. I don't think. I think kickle cubicle sounds wrong. Kickle cubicle. Oh, I see. I see. This. These fuckers are up to no good. Okay, he did it. Suck on it. That's interesting. Mechanically. deal with these things going around the outside like Solomon's key style okay yeah I feel like I should play more of this I don't know that's neat it's neat in like a, you know, in some of the same ways that like Solomon's key is neat. Not to, not to taint it with that comparison, because honestly, Solomon's key is so good. Um, I'm going to say that's better than Wrecking Crew. Not entirely dissimilar when we're talking about type puzzle type games or whatever. It's got to be better than Low G Man, the Low Gravity Man. 
Is it better than muscle tag team match? I don't know. Yes, I suppose it is. Is it better than Trojan? Oh, yeah. Yes, it's better than Trojan. But I guess that brings us down to, is it better than Kung Fu? It is, you know, Kung Fu, I, I, I like it. It's, it's not a difficult game. You grind through it in five minutes, <laughs> 10 minutes, whatever it is, uh, and do it again. You know, it's, it's an arcade game, you know, and it doesn't have the longevity of, you know, and that's, that's an unfair comparison, but that's what we're here to do, right? Is make unfair comparisons, right? Because we're tr trying to put all of these games on a list across a lot of different genres and a lot of different stuff. Just the replayability number of levels, like the the content, the the style of game that Kickle Cubicle is, I think is inherently, you know, at an advantage when it comes to this specific type of comparison. So I think it's better than Kung Fu. I do not think it's better than Solomon's Key. I I I, I do not think it's better than Solomon's Key. And so that leaves us with our new number three, Kickle Cubicle. We can all agree that that's, that's the, that is the emphasis you want to put on Cubicle, right? Because Cubicle, if you're like, Kickle Cubicle, that doesn't sound right. Kickle Cubicle. That's fun to say. Does this game have a different name in Japan or something? And they're just like, you know, hey, it's the 90s. What do we, what did... What was this called in Japan? Not that. Did it not come out in... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it did. Okay. Labyrinth Island or Meikyu... Meikyujima. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Labyrinth Island makes sense. Kickle, cubicle. I mean, you're kicking. It could add something in there. And you're kicking cubes. That's what they had. That's what like a marketing guy sat down and said, like, y'all ah, keep kicking cubes. And they're sitting in a cubicle in some office somewhere and they're going, kickle cubicle. And they're like, that sounds stupid. Ah, whatever. All these damn video games are stupid names. It's 1990. Who cares about Nintendo games anymore anyway? We're trying to make Super Nintendo games. So, oh, this was in arcades also. I, I, I did not know that. I did not know that. Um, well, that's going to do it for the list for this time. We're, we've got 18 games on our list. And uh, yeah, 18 games all over the list. I, I liked Trojan um, more than I thought I would. As soon as we started playing Trojan, I was like, this is terrible. I was like, oh, wait, no, Trojan's actually pretty good. Um, and the, the list is short enough now that like terrible games end up high or low and all sorts of different, you know, like we're, we're, you know, we're still in the early days of building this out. So, um, I'm going to guess that Renegade will probably not be the bottom game on the list forever, but it's got a goddamn shot. I'll tell you that much. I hate that game so much. <laughs> all right. We'll be back next time. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll take some of your, you know, I'll, I'll get some of your suggestions from the Gerstmann advisory panel over uh, on uh, patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstmann. We can start kind of, uh, you know, letting you pick a few of them here. Um, and uh, yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. I'll see you next week with the podcast on Tuesday. Take care. Bye.